Here we are again, and I am answering your questions. So as you all know, I have a Facebook group, and when you get into the Facebook group called Life After Narcissism, I ask, what do you need to know? What is it that you, what's the burning question that you have? And so today, I'm answering how to identify a narcissistic man. For you ladies who are dating, for you ladies who are starting over again and want to get out into the dating world, there's a lack of trust. Am I going to attract another narcissistic man? So that's what we're talking about today. How to identify a narcissistic man. Hello, my name is Denise Kavaleskis, and I am a transformational women's love coach. And I specialize in helping women and men heal after narcissistic relationships, abusive relationships, relationships, um, toxic relationships, relationships that involve traumas and dramas and heartbreak and heartache. <clears throat> and so, like I said, today, I want to answer this question for you because I get this a lot. And this is a really good educational piece for you to learn about and um, hear it again and again and again, over and over in your head so that you can um, know it by heart and recognize it really fast. That's the goal here, right? Okay, so let's dive in. <clears throat> Dating. Ah! Ah. Dating can be so nerve wracking. I'm so glad I don't date anymore. I'm so glad I am married. All right, so this can be super challenging because if you've had these patterns, these cycles of attracting toxic men, toxic relationships, then yeah, there is going to be this wondering thought like, how do I know? Is he a narcissist? How do I know this is the right one? How do I know he's not the right one? Like, how do I know? Especially the lack of trust that you now carry out of that relationship, right? Because <clears throat> it's true. You were duped, you were manipulated, you were coerced, you went through a series of events in your last relationship that made you not trust. And girl, I get it. So I, the first thing that I wanna say to you is it's not your fault. That is normal for you not to trust. So let's talk about dating. Um, so for some narcissistic men and women, there's almost like a profile to them, right? So um, like, the open shirt and the like jewelry and the like yo 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 and the like you know like there's just sometimes there's just literally a profile to so just I can look at some people and go mm, yeah I can also tell who they're with <clears throat> so um and not all but I would say I'm right 99% of the time so sometimes there is a profile to them where it's really easy for you to detect. And if you're like me and you like the bad boy look or the bad boy attitude like I did, um, that's one of them, right? <clears throat> There's also, when you're dating, you can notice, is he flirty with other women around you? Maybe it's the waitress or your friends or your mom. Like, is he flirty? Not friendly, flirty. So when you get that intuition hit, saying, mm, that's a little too friendly, trust that, that you're correct. Um, or is he rude? Is he unnecessarily rude to the waitress or other people? Does he, is he already picking on like your friends or your family. Oh, I don't like this person or <clears throat> things like that, right? So that, so when you're dating, you want to be notice of, noticing these things, okay? That's number one. Number two, love bombing. This is a huge one when you're dating. So I remember dating. Um, I want to say he was probably a sociopath. But they do 
have the narcissistic <clears throat> personality disorder in them. So um, love bombing is pretty much too much too soon, right? Let's move in together. Let's say I love you. Let's get married. Let's, you know, let's too much too soon. It's just the best way I can describe love bombing. So I was dating this guy and um, I put him in the first book. I put his story in the first book. I think I'm going to talk about him in the next one as well. But I was dating this guy and he wanted me to say I love you to him. And I just didn't feel it. And I didn't want to say I love you because I'd be lying. I don't, I'm not going to say I love you if I don't love you. Of course, at the time, I didn't know <clears throat> what was happening. And he was super like doty, doting on me. So like he would just look at me as like, I was like the best thing that ever happened like since sliced bread. I was just like, wow. And, you know, we were dating, so I kind of just bypassed that at the time. I didn't really think too much about it. But anyway, that's number two is the, is the too much too soon, the love bombing, like talking about the future way too soon, talking about marriage, having kids, um, getting engaged, buying a house, moving in together, saying I love you, all of those things that take time to, to grow into I love you to grow into the next phase of our relationship, right? Because let's be real in a healthy relationship, there's these phases. So <clears throat> if somebody's talking about moving in before like, you know, third date or even like two months after seeing each other, that's too much too soon. Also ladies and guys, trust your gut, trust your intuition. If it, the inside voice is saying to you, mm, not feeling it. Trust, trust that voice. Okay. All right. So number three is <clears throat> pay attention to his, pay attention to the way he talks about his current and past relationships. Or if you're in his life, like the dating has, you know, maybe you've been dating for a few months. Um, and you're in and you can see his relationships, pay attention to his current and past relationships. And here's another big one. Is every ex crazy? Does he describe every ex he's ever had as crazy? That's a big one. That's a big one. So you want to pay attention to the way he talks about people in his life. Like, is he close to his mom or is his mom an F and B or is he close to his sister's or brothers or you know whoever in his life or is there a lot of are you seeing a lot of oh this person you know did this to me or it's it's this person's fault why i blah 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 right that would show you victim him being in the victim mode you want to pay attention to that you want to pay attention to those relationship pieces because that's going to tell you a lot like <clears throat> To get into a relationship with somebody, to get into a healthy relationship with somebody and, and, and have a healthy relationship, they already have healthy relationships. They already have them. They're already in place. Even if it, that's with mom and dad and siblings, they already have them. So I want to invite you to my Facebook group. It is called Life After Narcissism. I'll put the link in the descriptions below. This is where... We come together as a community and we share tips, tools, and inspiration. I do a lot of training videos in the Facebook group for you. Um, and also, um, August 6, 2020, I will be doing a webinar called Three Keys to Having True Love After Toxic Love. And I'm going to be sharing that with you and I'm giving that those three keys to you this coming Thursday, August 6, 2020. 2020. Um, and I'll put the link in the description below for you to join us on the webinar so that you can get these keys so that, you know, overall, I could sit here and educate you all day on narcissism, how to detect it, how to identify it, how to, how to heal from it. But the truth is, is until 
excuse me, until you do heal from it, you're going to always have these questions. And you want to get past that. You want to get past like, like just the question of how do I identify a narcissistic man tells you that there's a lack of trust. It means I don't, I don't know how to identify a narcissistic man. So how do I, right? But when you heal, then you will no longer ask these questions. You will know, you will know. And that's where you want to get. That's the point that you want to get to so that you're no longer guessing or second guessing or doubting. You want to just know. You want to be able to go out in the world, whether it's dating, getting a job, whatever it is, you want to have it in you 100% confidence in knowing that you're okay. You're only going to attract healthy people, healthy relationships. And when you say like you're networking or something, right? I used to do that a lot in, with my business. When you're doing things like that, where you're around a lot of people, you can have a very short conversation with somebody and identify that person as, let's just even say, not for you. That person's just not for you. Whether it's business, friendship, anything, any kind of a partnership, that person's just not for you. You want to be able to have this in you so that you can boop, 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 eliminate, eliminate the people that are not for you, bring in, call in the people who are for you, right? So those are my invitations for you, the Facebook group, Life After Narcissism, and the webinar, Three Keys to Having True Love After Toxic Love, this Thursday, August 6, 2020. Links are in the description below. I love you so much. Thank you for tuning into my channel. If you get any value from this video or any of the other videos, please remember to smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel so that you get all the notifications of when a new video is uploaded. I do try to upload three a week and I am just so blessed to have you here. Healing and helping people heal is just such a passion for me so that we can eliminate all of this abuse on the planet. Have an amazing day.